All right, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started. Welcome, everybody. My name is Jim Musial. I am president of LA2M and get these meetings kicked off each month. Um, yes, I'm holding a microphone and it's not amplifying for you, it's amplifying for the video. So when later on when we pass this microphone around, you won't hear yourself, but the camera will. So, so welcome everybody. Um, welcome to our new digs. Um, this is awesome. We are really happy to be here. It's a great uh, private room uh, that will serve us very well. Uh, the previous location was just really loud, it was really hard, and it was, sound was really poor. Um, so we're really happy, uh, and Matt, thank you very much for helping secure this room and uh, the entire board of LA2M putting a lot of work to make sure we had a new facility uh, moving forward, and I think this is going to serve us very well. So uh, again, thank you everyone for, everyone for being here. Uh, this is LA2M. Do I have anybody here that's for the first time here today? Raise your hand if you're here for the first time. Awesome. Mike, you do not count. You have been here before. And I don't mean at Revel and Roll. I'm in at LA2M. So, so welcome to you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, we meet every month, second Wednesday of the month, except for, uh, for July and August. Uh, we do take the summer off. Um, but we are in finishing up our ninth year uh, as an organization, as a marketing organization, sharing uh, and bringing in great speakers each month. Um, so a lot of you guys, I see some familiar faces. You guys have been around for a number of years. I personally have been involved for six years with the organization um, and it's continued to grow and we want to keep it growing. So uh, we do that by having you guys come out to locations like this on a, on a beautiful afternoon. Um, so we're glad you're here and we're going to keep this moving. A um, couple things. So we, we uh, LA Tim, like I said, we've been around nine years. Um, continue to grow. We used to meet weekly, which was a little difficult, but we do meet monthly now. Second Wednesday of every month, you can put it on your calendar. We'd love to see new faces, so hopefully what you see here today, you'll want to come back, uh, bring a friend, bring a colleague, bring a client. Um, the, the, uh, the stuff that we share here is to help you uh, get your to where you need to go as far as marketing. Many of us wear multiple hats in our roles with whatever we do. Um, and a lot of us need those extra uh, help and techniques and tips on marketing ideas, and that's what we try to bring each month. We also love to network. Uh, we like to connect people. So hopefully, stick around. We're not in a hurry after this. Uh, after we're done today, beautiful location. Stick around and meet everybody. Um, when we at the end end of the meeting, uh, we're going to pass the the microphone around, and we're going to have a second to introduce ourselves. Um, so listen and and connect with people. Uh, it's a great way to do business together. Um, we have a great uh, board of volunteers um, that put in a lot of work to make sure that we have a meeting each month um, and we're very appreciative of that. Um, Carter from uh, Carter Shoreline from Frog Print Studios uh, does our photography and posts it on our social media site each month. Roger Rail does the video. Roger is not here today so we are very fortunate to have Bill and George uh, volunteering their times to videotape this so we appreciate their time. Um, we videotape videotape each of the presentations and put them on our website. So um, if you hear some things today and you're like, hey, what did he say about that? You can go back and watch the presentation. Uh, it'll be posted on our website in a couple days. We also have all our previous talks as well. So if you want to go back and see some of our previous speakers, there's some great stuff in there. Um, Stacy Colick from Dollar Bill Printing is our secretary and uh, handles all the emails and all the correspondence that comes out to you. Um, Leah McChesney is on our board. Matt Aldridge is on our board. Who am I forgetting? Corey Dunham is on our board. Um, so we, we put in a lot of time to make sure that, uh, that we keep LA2M strong. Um, one of the ways we do that is you guys coming here, but we also do that through our sponsorship. Uh, we have some great sponsors uh, that, that help us along. We have um, 3.7 Designs. Uh, Ross Johnson is, is a longtime friend, is actually one of the founders of LA2M and continues to support us. Uh, they do website development. Um, also runs the local WordPress uh, organization. Uh, University of Michigan Credit Unions. Do we have anyone from the credit union today? Would you like to get up and say a few things about the credit union? <laughs> no, nah, I'm not gonna, put you on, not gonna put you on the spot. But we appreciate, uh, appreciate the, the credit union uh, being a sponsor. They've, they've been a sponsor for now two years with, uh, with LA2M. And without that support, we can't continue to grow. So we thank you guys and we thank you for being here today. Um, Corey, uh, BDB uh, Digital Marketing. Um, is another one of our sponsors, and Corey's one of our board, but I'd like Corey to come up and say a few words. 
Hi, my name is Corey with BDB Marketing Design and Web Development, and we help companies that are uh, struggling to keep up with their, their websites, their marketing, uh, their graphic design, and they may be looking for either an agency to help them out or um, someone to kind of, um, I guess, work with them on their production. And it might be a cost-effective way to do that rather than having to hire somebody full-time. So that's what we can do. Thank you very much, Corey. We appreciate, uh, again, your, your support and sponsorship. If you or your company would be interested in, in sponsoring, we have monthly sponsorships available as well. Uh, that would be included uh, in you get the opportunity to get up and talk a little bit, as well as be a part of our email uh, that goes out. So if you're interested in that, please see any one of us on the board, and we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Um, so that's about it. Meeting, uh, just real quick, the kind of format. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the speaker. He's going to speak for probably about... Three hours. Three hours. <laughs> so we'll have you out of here before rush hour. Um, now we'll, we'll be, we'll probably be about 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. We'll have some time, I'm assuming, for some Q&A at the end. And then we'll pass the microphone and, and get a chance to introduce yourself and, and hopefully meet everybody here in the room. Um, so my pleasure to introduce Mike. Mike McClure has, uh, has been a friend of LA2M for a number of years. Uh, I met Mike many years ago, both through LA2M and through the Detroit Regional Chamber uh, and through the social media. Uh, avenues of uh, Social Media Association of Michigan. Did I say that right? Yeah. So uh, it's been a few years, and uh, Mike is a uh, is a is a force in uh, social media and in, in the in the Detroit area, uh, as well as uh, as being uh, senior creative director at mm -hmm. Yaffe Group in Southfield. So I won't tell everything. I'm sure Mike will give you a little bit about his background, but we're very fortunate to have him here to discuss. Uh, ways that you can utilize social media to your advantage uh, in your business. So if you would put your hands together and welcome Mike McClure. Thank you. I think I got the mic. Hi, everybody. Hello. How's the food? Delish. That's what I hear. I didn't want to eat while I'm up here. I figured it'd be hard to understand. <laughs> I want to get just a feel for who's in the room. I'm assuming you're all in marketing. I, since it's a marketing thing, but who's in marketing? Right, most of you. How many of you work for a marketing firm? How many of you work for your own uh, agency or entrepreneurship? How many of you work on the client side? How many of you just like screwing around? <laughs> Excellent. I, I started out as a writer-producer at uh, JWT, moved to BVDO, became creative director for the, the regional Dodge account, uh, did a couple of years of freelance, ended up at the Yaffe Group where I became uh, one of the partners and executive creative director. I jumped on social media earlier, especially because I felt it was a writer's medium in the beginning and I, I really loved uh, what you could do with it. and. So I, I, I've kind of brought the agency along on the digital side. So being the only one who understood it, I became the senior vice president of digital communications. <laughs> um, so one thing I've found, whether you're a huge company or a small company, there are two things you can do to give yourself an advantage. It don't cost a lot, just cost some brain power and some time. And that's your creativity and your agility. Uh, this was a quote from Maurice Saatchi, who founded the agency Saatchi & Saatchi uh, quite a while ago. Creativity is the last legal way to gain an unfair advantage over your competition. I, I stole that for the name of my, my talk here, but he was talking about advertising and marketing back then. It's even more uh, relevant today if you're working in digital, if you're working in social media, because we all have the same tools. We all have the same rules. We all have the same things we can use. Sure, there's new things that come out all the time, new channels that come up, things you need to learn. But in reality, we all kind of have the same thing. So how you, how you are creative and make your messaging stand out is how you can t create an advantage. And that's important because, oops, because here we go.
Meanwhile, back in the presentation. That's important because the average consumer sees 4,000 marketing messages a day. I've been talking about creativity and agility for about five years now. When I first started talking about it, it w the number was just under 500 messages a day. Uh, when I was updating it for this presentation, uh, I f found several things that said 4,000. I found one that said 5,000. 4,000, 5,000 doesn't make a difference. People are seeing a lot of messaging. And this doesn't even count the texts they get, their Facebooks, the, the Twitter from their friends, all that. So there's a lot of messages coming in. And on top of all that, people are doing whatever they can to avoid your messaging. You know, I'm, I make my living from marketing. All the money that comes into my household is from marketing, and I avoid it. I DVR everything and skip the commercials. I watch Netflix. When I'm in the car, I listen to Sirius Radio. When I'm in the office, I listen to Spotify. When I'm out in the backyard, I listen to Pandora. There's all these ways for people to avoid your messaging. However, if you, you've noticed, people pass around, if somebody does a really creative video or a really creative ad or, or a meme, that gets passed around. So creativity is your way to get past the fact that we're bombarded with all these messages and we're trying to avoid them. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. And in this context, I think that's very true because we all can learn how to use the tools that are available to us. We can all learn, you know, whatever the new Facebook algorithm tells us to do, there'll be a bunch of articles on it, we can all figure it out. We can all figure out all these things, the knowledge is available, it's at our fingertips, it's in our pockets. But your imagination, being able to come up with something different, being able to come up with an idea that somebody else doesn't have, that's more important today than ever. Or if you'd like your quotes from somebody from this century, Lady Gaga said, when you make music or write or create, it's really your job to have mind-blowing, irresponsible, condomless sex with whatever idea you're writing about at the time. And what she's really saying is, Come up with an idea that you're passionate about, that you're not afraid to break the rules, that you're not afraid to be irresponsible about and not do what everybody else is doing, because that's what's going to stand out. Lady Gaga is not for everyone, but everyone knows who she is because she does things that stand out, that are different, that are creative. So I'm going to walk you through, if you think, well, I'm, I'm not a creative person, and I don't have the time to be agile, I'm going to give you four or five ideas on how you can be creative and how you can be agile. Starting out, one idea for being creative is look at things from the opposite point of view. What is everybody in your niche doing? What is the opposite of that? Um, so what do I mean by that? Okay, the example I have, if you're a nonprofit or you're an organization trying to get money for a cause, they all do the same thing. They get pictures of the sad kids that need your help or the sad dogs that need your help. They got Sarah McLaughlin playing in the background. <laughs> Everybody does that. So Water is Life said, let's take the opposite approach. Let's take the people that need your help and have them sympathize with your first world problems. And this is what they did. Well, last time I clicked it, it played. Water is Life is a charity that deals with real, life-threatening problems. Ones that make ours at home seem trivial in comparison. To put this into perspective, we flipped the popular yet insensitive First World Problems meme on its head and used it to help spread awareness of the world water crisis. This is the hashtag killer the first ever attempt to end a hashtag rather than promote it. I hit when my phone charger won't reach my bed. I hit when my little seats aren't heated. When I go to the bathroom and I forget my phone. Let me tell you the machine at the end, the public system to launch the project, we created an anthem commercial by gathering first world problem tweets and having people in Haiti recite them. 
Moi, va aller les voisins à bloquer Internet là. But perhaps even more effective was the series of personalized responses in which various Haitians console those who have used the hashtag. I'm sorry, you've been working by cleaning a lady. I'm sorry, you've been working by I'm sorry, you have to get up on the couch. I hope you're going to get better. My name is Sandra. If I was, if I was there, I'd get better for you. The campaign was immediately picked up by celebrities, influencers, and every major news outlet. But it was bigger than just gaining impressions or ending hashtags. We were able to change the conversation through social media. Instead of complaining about first world problems, people began using the hashtag as a vehicle to spread Water is Life's message and to encourage donations. And enough donations came in to provide over a million days worth of clean water to those in need. Some people called it a meme jacking campaign, others called it reverse trending, but we call it hashtag killer. Not just an attempt to end a hashtag, but to use social media to effect a real change in our world. So there you go. Take a look at your niche. Take a look at w what you're doing. What is everybody doing? If you did the exact opposite, what would it look like? And as you can see, by being creative and doing the ac actual opposite, it was very successful for them. And being creative isn't just for the people who write and design and are, have creative in their title like me. You can be creative if you're a strategist. Um, this, if, you're, if you're the one who does the strategies, if you're the one who figures out how you go to market, you, you can be creative there too. And one way you can do that is look for new connections for your target audience. Now, is there a different way that the, that the people you're trying to buy your product or use your service, is there a different way you can connect with them? Let's say, for instance, your business relies on tourism, and the place that relies on tourism all of a sudden isn't in fashion anymore. Like, let's say, tourism to Mexico. And the current client here in, in the United States is that uh, the president keeps talking about how if you go down there, there's caravans of rapists and bad men. And, and so how do you get people to want to come? You know, find a different way to connect with people, particularly in their case, their largest target market is the people in the border states, where they're putting up the wall or not. We don't know. Um, and here's what they did. Mexico's first destination is America. But America's first destination is not Mexico. So we went to a typical American town to ask why they don't consider Mexico an option to travel to. Would you consider going to Mexico? No way. The idea of going to Mexico is not something that I would foresee. That's not my cup of tea. Let me stay here in peace and let those folks stay on their side of the border. Do you like tequila? Yes. Do you like burritos? Yeah. Do you like Mexico? No. And when your company name is Edo Mexico, well, so how do we increase USA flights to Mexico if a big part of Americans just don't like Mexico? According to the Department of Homeland Security, Mexican immigration goes as far as the 1800s settling in on the South, meaning that a big percentage of Mexican ascendants in the USA doesn't even know it yet. So we did a DNA test to prove it and turn those results into discounts. The more Mexican they are, the more discount they get. Joshua, you are 18% Mexican. Oh, wow. So you get 18% off the flight of Mexico. Charlotte, you are 14.4% Mexican. You're 22% Mexican. That's bullshit. You are 18% Mexican. Well, that's better than you. <laughs> so you get 22% off the flight of Mexico. Oh, come on now. Seriously? Yeah. That's real. So what if I want to take my wife? eligible for a 15% discount to go to Mexico. <laughs> what do you think about that? I love discounts. Sorry, Betsy. You're only 3% Mexican. <laughs> so we 
kept getting discounts all over South America in our travel agencies. Inner discounts. There are no borders within us. Yeah, I'd go to Mexico if they had Taco Bells on the street corner of the there. <laughs> So there you see, they had a problem. They're, all these people down in the southern part of the country didn't want to go to Mexico. They found, they came up with a creative and innovative way to give them a discount, to get them involved in it. Where, so the guy went from, I don't want to go to Mexico, to, ha, I'm more Mexican than you are. <laughs> the other guy went from bullshit to, can I take my wife? So just by coming up with a creative way to solve that solution. You know, what can we do to connect with this thing? Okay, we found some facts that, that immigration in the South has been a part of it for over 100 years. Chances are a lot of people have some Mexican heritage in it. You know, doing the genealogy things become a thing. So just look at, look at your, your, the people you're trying to connect with and find a creative way to connect with them. Oops. Mexico's first destination. Now it works. Another way you can be creative, find ways to get unexpected business operations and departments into your campaign. You know, the connecting with your, with your people and marketing your, your client, your services, your product, doesn't just have to involve the people in the marketing department or the people in management. Uh, we, had, we have a uh, furniture retailer down in Virginia that we work with, and when we took over running their Facebook for them, they had a problem in that they had hardly anybody was connected to it, and there was hardly any engagement. And it's like, how can we get more people to, to like them on Facebook and start engaging with them. So we th we're thinking about when it comes to buying furniture, what's that moment of joy? It sure as hell isn't when you're working with the salesperson. Nobody likes that part of the thing. What's that moment of joy in your furniture buying experience? Well, it's when you get it in your home. It's when you see what it looks like in your home. And who are the people who, who bring in that furniture? It's our delivery guys. So we came up with a campaign where we involved this department you would have never thought of, including in your marketing, the, the delivery personnel. And what we did was we came up with, we created a sheet that we gave every one of the delivery people and we, we trained them. On one side, you know, it, uh, it said, show us your new furniture on Facebook for a chance to win a free gift. We didn't even say what the gift was because they wanted to change it every month. That's what the gift was some copy about that and then on the other side we showed them you know everybody likes to get positive feedbacks from their friends so we showed an example of hey look if you put your your furniture online you can get all these great comments from your friends on how great it is so we trained the the delivery guys when you deliver it if they're really happy with the furniture rip off one of these and give it to them obviously if they're not happy we don't want them on our Facebook don't <laughs> hand them one but most of the time they were happy, and it worked very well. We were able to get a ton, we, a ton more people liked. We had a lot of engagement. We, so we got posts like this, where this person posted the thing, says, got my new furniture today, super comfy. Thanks for all your help, Kelly. Your patience with my indecision helped me settle on the perfect fabric. Now to accessorize the rest of the room. And we came back in. Looks great, Terry. Glad to hear you're enjoying your new furniture. Have fun accessorizing. So this person put up a thing, talked about how the salesperson helped them when they were indecisive, which we all know is a problem. People don't like salespeople. So it was a positive thing about the salespeople. <coughs> and of course, even though she said she wanted to accessorize, we don't jump in and try and sell her accessories. We just tell her have fun doing it. She knows we have accessories. Another person posted, both the husband and the wife posted here. This is our new bonded leather sectional from Grands. The best thing about it, this furniture is it allows us to host family and friends at the house and provides a great comfort for us just for hanging around. 
thank Grands, the name is Grand, but thank Grands Lynchburg, Virginia. You guys rock. And then the husband came in, love, love, love this couch. Grands made it easy to get what we wanted <coughs> and needed for our family. The guys that came to set it up were professional and awesome. So a shout out to our delivery guys. And then get, getting another group with another department involved, we let the salespeople know this was happening. The salesperson got on and said, thanks, Mike and Candy, for allowing me to work with you guys. Glad you enjoy it. So <coughs> when you're thinking about marketing, and one other way you can be creative is think about what other departments within the organization you could get involved in and help them get your story out. How, who, in, you know, and generally when you talk to these people and, and, they, and ask them to be a part of it, they get excited about it because no one's ever asked them to. You know, the delivery guys, no one's ever asked them, hey, we need you to be a part of this marketing campaign. We need you to, to do this. And they were excited to do it. So look at who you think you can, can do that with. Another way you can be creative is you can partner with another brand to create a surprise. You know, we, one of the things that, that gets us excited and makes something memorable is, is there's a surprise twist in it. And it, sometimes bringing in another brand and doing a co-branded thing can, can create that surprise that really sticks with someone. My favorite Super Bowl ad this last year did just that. Bud Light teamed up with Game of Thrones. And, it was totally unexpected. You, you have this whole Bud Light night thing that they've been doing forever. And he's like this in, invincible knight. And they have this joust. And he gets knocked off his horse. So they're, they're surprise number one. And you see the knight that, that knocked him off his horse. And if you're a Game of Thrones fan like I am, you recognize the helmet. It's like, that's the mountain. What the hell's going on here? And the next thing, there's dragons burning everything up. And, so, <laughs> and it, it was it was. It created a surprise by combining the two brands in a way that I thought was very creative and very memorable. It's a beautiful day for a toast. Indeed. Sun's out. Got my lucky loincloth, cold Bud Light, comfy throne. I don't have a plague anymore. Look, it's the Bud Light. <laughs> All right, let's tap this chair. Obviously, they spent millions of dollars on that, and I'm guessing most of your clients don't have that kind of cash. <laughs> but that the concept of being creative by finding another brand to partner with and doing something surprising so it sticks in someone's mind, it, that works at any level. Another way you can be creative is to do something no one else is doing. You know, we talked earlier about doing the opposite of, of what people in your niche are doing. Well, think about what would you what would your brand, what would you think they would never do? And then can you do it? Now, where's some place you would never put your advertising? And where no one puts their advertising? In the case of an app called Eat24, they found there was, there was one place they could put ads where they could be creative with them, and no one else was there, and that was to advertise on porn sites. <laughs> so they created these ads, and, and they found that, that not, only, not only were the ads a fraction of the cost of the ones they were putting on Facebook and, and Google, but they were three times as effective. And the people who got the app through, this, uh, through these ads were twice as likely to continue using it. 
it, it, in fact, it was so successful that they wrote a blog post on how to advertise on porn sites, which if you want to see it, that's where you go. And it actually started out as an influencer campaign because they were monitoring you know, who was tweeting about their, their product and they noticed there was a number of porn stars who were tweeting about using their product. And if you think about it, if, you have, if you're a live cam model or whatever, you can't run out and get something to eat. So once they found these people and they knew they had a loyal following, they started providing, seeking them out and providing them free services if they would talk about it. And that started going well. So that's how they started looking to, and there was no competition because the only other ads on porn sites are for other porn sites or for sex toys. So this, something like this really stood out and turned out to be very effective. Now I'm not saying you should get your clients or your <laughs> in, thing on, on a porn site, but think about, you know, make a list. Just sit down and make a list. What are the things we would never do? And then think about what would happen if we did it? So that, that's another way to be creative. So let's shift to agility. There's a ton of great quotes about creativity. Quotes about agility suck. This is the best one I could find. Agility means you are faster than your competition. Agile time frames are measured in weeks and months and not years. And we all know today they're actually measured in days and hours and not weeks. You know, the time frames keep moving up, especially if you're on social media or working in the digital media. People expect responses quickly. People expect you to, to get back to them. They expect things to be relevant rather quickly. So this is another way you can be agile. How many of you remember a few years ago when they had a, a power failure at the Super Bowl and they had to wait like 20, 30 minutes for the lights to come back up? How many of you remember? Oops. How does a product that How many of you remember this tweet? Oreo, because they had already put together a group, they had already been marketing it as an agile company that responds to what's going on. During that 20 to 30 minutes when nothing was going on because this, the network had already run all their things all day, uh, they had to wait for the lights to warm up, so they tweeted out. You can still power out, no problem. You can still dunk in the dark. Many people hailed that as the best Super Bowl ad that year, including me. I write a column in our blog about what I think are the best Super Bowl ads this year. But what made it one of the best Super Bowl ads that year wasn't that it was creative. Sure, it's kind of cute, but it wasn't the creativity that made it great. It was the agility that made it great. It was the fact that they were able to, during that 20, 30 minute time, that. Everybody was sitting, thumbing through Twitter, finding things to do. They created this and they got it right out. And the reason they were able to do that is because they, they had made a commitment to create ads about whatever was going on on a regular basis. Oops. Touchy, touchy. How does a product that hasn't changed a lick in 100 years find its way to the center of the cultural dialogue? It takes a lot of bravery and a little swagger. The strategy was to reimagine pop culture through the eyes of Oreo. We called it Daily Twist, an ambitious exercise in real-time culture jacket. 100 days, 100 twists. Oreo translated each piece of pop culture into shareable social content. Agency partners and brand stakeholders created a virtual newsroom, collaborating to create a new piece of content every single day. It was a risky move for our 100-year-old brand, but we believed in the power of real-time social content. See, it wasn't just about making stuff. It was about creating a platform for conversation. We made the content talkable. And people talked. And 
for the final twist, we handed it over to our fans to decide. Daily Twist became a living, breathing part of culture, just like Oreo has been for over a century. Some pretty important people noticed. From classic cookie to media darling, we've changed the way a new generation experiences Oreo, and we're just getting started. So, paying attention to what's going on, tying it, your brand, your service into something fairly quickly is another way to get attention from all those messages we're being bombarded with and trying to avoid. How, how many of you are familiar with, with David Meerman Scott's uh, newsjacking? Okay, he wrote the book. The concept is it's kind of what Oreo did. It, the concept is take a news, something happening in the news, and create content relevant to it so it, your content becomes part of the news. His favorite example was there was, I forget exactly what it was, but it was a, a, some kind of tech security firm, and two of the top competitors of, of one of them were merging. And like typical big corporations, they were being very hush-hush about it. They weren't putting out any information about it. But their main competitor, the president of that company, saw that this was happening, sat down and wrote a long op-ed about what he thought it meant to the industry, this, this merger. So he, didn't, he wasn't talking about his specific brand. He was just talking about the overall industry and what was going to happen to this merger. Now, journalists, just like the rest of us, when they're looking for information, they just start Googling things. So when they Googled this, in, this merger, all they could find was a very small press release that the two companies merger, merging found, had put out, and this op-ed by the president of their top competition. So almost every news story about that merger contained quotes about that merger's competition, from that merger's competition. So by creating content that was relevant, he was able to get his own company out there all the time. And, it, and when you create content that, that's relevant to, to, and news jack, it, does, it doesn't necessarily, it can live beyond the news cycle. Um, a few years ago, when they had a record snowstorm up in Canada, this chiropractor, Tim Wood, went outside and he, and he recorded a seven minute video on the proper way to shovel all this snow without hurting your back. It was relevant to his brand, but it was relevant to what was going on right then and there. And it got a lot of play. I'm not playing it for you because it's pretty boring seven minutes, but, and none of us want to look at snow anymore. But, <laughs> but you get the idea. He, he, created this video, and then what happened was this last winter, there was another record snowstorm. The largest news media hub found this video and posted it on their site, so he got a ton more of links back into his business because he had created this, this piece of content that tied into it. Of course, if you're going to news jack, you need to be careful. Um, some people do it horribly wrong, like Kenneth Cole. During the Arab Spring and the Egypt Uprising, he thought a good way to news Jack would be say, millions in the uproar in Cairo. Rumor has it they heard about our spring collection now available online at, and then you can see about an hour later I had to put, uh, regarding the Egypt, we, we weren't intending to make light of a serious situation. We understand the sensitivity of this historic moment. Obviously, he did not understand the sensitivity. So don't be a dick. When you're, <laughs> when you're newsjacking. So that was a newsjack fail. Last year when David Bowie died, Crocs put out this one. I wouldn't call it a fail, but I'd call it a miss. Anybody tell me why this is not a good newsjack? Anyone? Exactly. They have no connection to David Bowie. I'm a huge David Bowie fan. I'm pretty certain he never wore Crocs. Uh, <laughs> You know, so it's, they're, they're trying to tie into the news. 
but their brand has no connection to David Bowie. And, and even if they were, even let's say the, the president of the company was a huge Bowie fan and wanted to honor him, well then put a picture of David Bowie. Don't put a picture of your Crocs. You know, so newsjacking can be a very powerful way to get you worried about your company out there, but it can also be, lead to just disaster if you're not doing it right. So be careful when you do it. Another way to be agile is to find ways to help thing, people. I mean, that's really when you look at how social media has worked, the companies doing right are, are finding ways to help people. Um, you know, you should always be look, reading your posts and your comments and your emails. And when people are looking for some help, you give them help. You, you get right in there and you answer their questions. Um, there, another way, this was a suggestion I had for a local pizza franchise. Say you just monitor in the area around your, around your franchise and you happen to see a tweet from someone that says, I ordered a pizza an hour ago from Papa John's. Can't believe it's still not here. Well, if you're being agile, you could send that person a tweet and say, hey, we're, uh, we're Mike's Pizza down the street. Sorry you're going hungry. We'd like to help you out. Uh, DM us your address, we'll get you a pizza within 10 minutes for free. You know, so if, if you help someone out and, and did that, you'd, you'd be able to, uh, you know, you'd get a lot of word of mouth. That person's gonna tell a lot of people that that happened. Um, on a larger scale, Red Cross did this when there was the disaster in Haiti. They came up with this idea that had never been done before. Hey, if you, if you just text this number, $10 to be added to your bill. It was a way that they saw a problem, wanted to help, was able to create a response really quickly. It, it brought in millions of dollars within days, and it has now become a standard way to help in these kinds of crises. Another way to, is to be agile is to respond to customers, to competition, to changing market conditions. When you see something going on, jump in and respond to it quickly. Uh, a couple years ago, one of H&R Block's competitors ran a bunch of ads that didn't name H&R Block, but they were obviously targeting them, talking about how you know, the guy who was the plumber under the sink was also their tax person, how they're not full-time tax people. And H&R Block immediately came up with a response, sent out a message to all of their tax people all across the country and got hundreds of them to write a quick thing about who they were and post the pictures online. It was something that didn't cost a lot of money. They just went out and did it. So one gal's whole up, I, I served 450 taxpayers in 2012. I found 80 people more money with second look. I assisted over 30 victims of income tax fraud, ID theft. I am a resource in my community. I am a, an H&R Block tax pro. And they, went, they had a ton of the different people do it. They are even their marketing people and and Henry R. Block himself. They all just wrote up little signs, held them up, took a picture, posted them on online. It was a way to respond very quickly to something that happened. Another way to be responsive is you can use the data and algorithms. You know, now we've got so much data available to us, so many algorithms that you can create, uh, you can automate something that, that so you are responding to, to things very agilely in terms of giving them creative that goes exactly to them. Uh, Campbell Soup in Australia did just that, creating a whole bunch of different ads relating to whatever you were searching for. The soup has been nourishing humanity for millennia. That's why Campbell's believes no matter what life throws at you, we the soup from that. The trouble is, we only ever think to cook it when it gets cold. And with 2016 marking Australia's warmest winter on record, sales of Campbell's soup had hit an all-time low. 
We needed to make a 20,000 year old dish relevant in 2016. So we created SoupTube, a pre-roll campaign with over 1,700 individual ads. Each one specifically tailored to the video you were searching for on YouTube. Excited for the new season of Orange is the New Black? You'll be served this. If you're listening to single ladies, you'll see this. Trying to make sense of world politics? Can't let go of let it go? Looking for fail videos? Searching for carpool karaoke? Catching up on UFC highlights? Need cooking advice? New Star Wars trailer? We even created daily pre-rolls related to the world's trending topics, like Brexit, the Icelandic soccer team, and Pokemon Go. It allows us to be really relevant, really topical, and really quick. And I think it's a really interesting campaign just because of how targeted it is, and it really sets a benchmark for how brands and their agencies should consider communications moving forward. This resulted in an average view rate of 90%, a total of 2.5 million impressions, a 24.7% lift in ad recall and a 6.9% lift in brand awareness. And best of all, a 55.6% increase in sales of Campbell's Simply Soups. We didn't give Australians a reason to buy Campbell's Soup, we gave them thousands, helping Campbell's Soup become relevant almost 20,000 years later. I'm gonna go get some soup. So there are tools out there that you can use. You don't need to create 17 hundred ads but you know maybe you create five and and market them to different people based on who they are and what they're looking for and of course be agile enough to switch gears when something isn't working or conditions change I don't have an example for this but it's just as you put your plans forth, don't doggedly stick to them if they're not working. If something, or if the conditions, the market conditions change. Be agile to be quick and be able to change what's going on. And of course, if you're able to combine both agility and creativity, you've got a winner. And someone who's done that very well recently is BarkBox. Is, their site is full of a bunch of memes that tie into what's going on. So. You see a fashion model with these weird holes in her dress. Hey, we've got a chew toy that kind of matches it, so we'll do a meme on who wore it best. Or when... Uh, that's for mean girls, that's no fashion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, when Bird Box became a, a trending thing and everybody was doing the Bird Box challenge, well, you know, we're practically the same name. We'll just cross off A-R-K and put I-R-D, blindfold a couple of dogs, and there's a meme. So there's using creativity and agility together. That's my spiel. Any questions? Yes. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass the microphone around. Um, <clears throat> When IHOP pretended they were changing to be International House of Burgers, yeah, did you see that whole campaign? Yes. What did you think of that? It, Do, does it everybody know what that is? Okay. It, it was an attempt that I don't think, well, in some ways it played off well because they got a hell of a lot of publicity, but I think most people thought it was, was a kind of a thud. So, But I don't know what it did for their sales. I mean, they got a lot of publicity and a lot of people talking about it. Creativity, cre cre creatively, I didn't particularly care for it. I thought it was kind of a bait and switch, but, okay. but it was an interesting uh, ploy that got them a lot of conversation. They got trolled. Like when yeah, they, they got trolled a lot. They got trolled badly. That's conversation, though. Yep. <laughs> Anyone else? How do you plan to adjust any of your strategies or anything as Facebook starts to move away from the main news feed and more focusing on private groups and events um, based on the backlash they got after the last election and just the Cambridge Analytica stuff? So how do you plan to infiltrate private groups and events and hone in more on that than the classic like content management and ads? Um. 
I think because they want money, ads will continue to work. Uh, and if you have good content, they'll continue to work. If you're a brand, it's hard to infiltrate a group, as you say, because you won't be welcomed unless it's really relevant to you. You can create your own groups. Um, it, you know, that's something brands can start to do. Create a group around something you're an expert in and get people talking about that. And if people join that, they know that you're the one that put it together and the sponsor, as long as you're not like super salesy in it, that can work. But if you, if you try and insert yourself as a brand into some groups and start talking, you might get some blowback on it. Now, people within that brand can go in there and be parts of groups. You just have to be careful that you're not being a douche about your own brand. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, th thank you very much. I I'm sure Mike will stick around for a few minutes if you have another question, didn't want to ask it out loud. But again, if we could uh, put our hands together and thank Mike again for his content. I think we all look at those things and we see those and say, oh, yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. How can we apply those things to what we do? And I think that's the whole idea behind uh, having Mike here today and the speakers that we bring in here is, is to stop and help us think about the things that we can do in our business and for our companies and for the, the, the things that we are involved with, whether they're organizations or whether they're in your personal life. Hopefully these things will, will help you get there. So we appreciate the information you shared today, Mike. Thank you very much. That was awesome. So, this is a great time of, the, of our meeting that we have each month. We take a few minutes and we go around the room uh, and we ask everyone to just stand up, introduce themselves, uh, just real quick who you are, if you want to tell us what company you're with, if you have a real quick ask or need, please not stories, just a quick ask and need if you want to share with the group and then you can connect with people afterwards. We'll go around the room and everybody take a minute. If you don't want to, it's okay. You can just pass the mic to the next person. And yes, the microphone is not amplifying your voice, so please talk loud. This is just for the, for the camera. So we'll start over here and get all the way around the room. And I'd ask you to please stand so everybody can see you. And I'll put you on the spot. Um, my name is Brandi Krupp and I'm with Spectrum Home Mortgage. I'm a mortgage broker. I specialize in self-employed investment properties and those out-of-the-box, hard-to-finance deals. Uh, Amy Ma, um, I work with many things that has to do with climate change. Hi, I'm Rebecca Sweden, and my company is Out of Sight Designs. I'm a freelance designer specializing in UX design for web and mobile apps. Hi, I'm Shannon Janizic. I'm the marketing director for Dreammaker Bath and Kitchen. You probably hear our ads on the radio and, and see on the uh, TV. Um, we love ugly kitchens, so if you have one, please let me know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Janet Max. I'm a freelance writer and editor, always looking for new projects. Hi, my name is uh, Anna Britnell. I'm from Saline Area Schools. Um, I'm a program specialist, but I oversee some of the social media and branding for the district. Um, I just bought a house last night, and I have an ugly kitchen. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carly Tawaz. I'm an event coordinator for the <laughs> University of Michigan Credit Union, and this is my first meeting. So, nice to meet you all. Hi, I'm Haley Burrell. I work at the University of Michigan Credit Union as well, and I'm their media coordinator. Hey, I'm Matt Aldrich. I run Fangorn Media. Uh, I'd love to build or rebuild your website. Hi, I'm Jason Burbo. I work at the Ann Arbor Music Center, and uh, we're going through an expansion. We just purchased a building in Saline, 47,000 square foot building, yeah, for a second location. Our first location is uh, downtown by the Fleetwood. Hi, I'm Val Juskevich. I'm a uh, music industry consultant where I connect creative people with commerce. I've been doing that for two and a half days. Uh, <laughs> I retired from a company down the street called Char Music, where I did that for 28 years. Hi, I'm Rick Tapke of Tapke Solutions. One of the things we do is uh, help business owners if your personal identity is stolen. 
Uh, the last thing you want to do is spend tens or hundreds of hours fixing that yourself. We have a solution that completely restores your identity by licensed private investigators so you can keep doing what you do best. <clears throat> My name is uh, Elmo and I t print t-shirts, I lead spinning classes, and I coach ping pong. In last meeting, I had invited the group to come to my daughter's wedding, and only about 800 people accepted the invitation. <laughs> we had a fabulous turnout at the Michigan Theater. When the movie comes out, come see it, Bride Plus One. Uh, my name is Z Kennedy. I am, my husband and I both own a boxing gym. Uh, we offer fitness classes and competitive and pro fights as well. So um, we're located in Ann Arbor, and that's about it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Larry Lage. I'm a sports writer for the AP, but I'm here for my side hustle, uh, selling memberships for Georgetown Country Club. So come see me if you're interested, uh, and happy to be here. I'm Celia Fallon, and I own a yoga studio, and I also teach yoga in Celine to his wife, among other people. Um, and I was really, this was awesome because we just had a sale. My mom is turning 88, so we had an eight for $88 sale. So I think we're on the right track. Hi, I'm Leah McChesney. I do freelance um, social media marketing and some digital marketing. Um, I do an array of different projects, but my ask is, if you're on Facebook, please check into this event. That would help us so much, and if you're not sure how, I can help you out. Help you. George, on camera, please. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Bill Hall, I'm with Podium Video and I concentrate on long-form presentations such as we have here, slides, as my wife used to say, still says, dog and pony shows, as, as well as live streaming. Talk to me about streaming. George. I'm Stacy. Um, I am, help plan LA2M, so if you know of any good speakers, um, that you'd like to see, please email me or email la 2 m and let me know. Um, I'm also part of WXW, which is Women's Exchange. It's a women's business group. We meet on the third Thursday of the month. So that's next Thursday at Meta Toronto. Um, it's a great group of women that help each other with any business kind of problems you have. And there's always a speaker and you learn a lesson just like this. Um, and that's it, I guess. Oh, what I do. The printing, <laughs> dollar bill printing, your local digital print shop are really fast and cost effective as Leah knows. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, Bill, you got me. So my name is George Pariso. My company is Brainstream Creative. And the way that I help my clients is number one, I help them build systems and tools that they can use to leverage video in their marketing. I provide one-on-one -on -one training with tools, software, and on techniques. And then finally, I help them create content that has an impact with their audience. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carter Sherline, Frog Print Studios. I've got a belt that's not uh, amplifying me. Uh, um, uh, I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer. If you're a runner, I'm sure you've seen me with a big lens in front of me. Uh, and if, or if you're into golf, you've seen me at the pro tournaments. I also shoot the courses. Um, but I shoot just about everything, except for weddings. So <laughs> and unfortunately, I missed the movie. Uh, I was shooting a run. <laughs> All right, thank you. And again, my name is Jim Musial. Uh, in, in addition to being uh, president of Valley 2M and helping kind of organize these meetings, um, I also am a process assistant at Amazon. Um, so if your products come quickly, you're welcome. If they didn't, <laughs> if they didn't come quickly, it's not my problem. <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, hey, thank you guys for being here. This is awesome. Love the new site. This is really great. I've never had it so quiet at one of our meetings. Amy, sit down. <laughs> sit down, Amy. <laughs> so 
as Amy's doing, I'd like you guys to stick around and network. Make sure that for everyone that you, you heard, stop and say hello. It's a great, great place to meet new people, do business together. I'm just kidding, Amy. You know that. Um, but we do have another event next month. June 12th, I think, is the second Wednesday. Who's our speaker next month? Okay. What is it? Ian Matthews, thank you, thank you. Um, we're going to be here again, second Wednesday of every month, at least till next month. Then we're off July and August, and we'll pick back up in the in the fall. Um, thank you guys for being here. Um, this is a great event. I hope the food was great. I hear it's great here. I'm going to actually stick around and grab lunch. Um, so stick around, have have some fun, have some networking, get to know each other. Uh, thank you again, Mike, for being here, and we appreciate you guys being here, and have a great day. Thanks. Thank you.